My days are cooler, nights are warmer, and I put the blame on you. Time moves slow, but my heart beats faster. When these eyes are looking right at you, right at you, you give me something to believe in, just what I need in. Okay, so you know I watch CBS Sunday morning on Sundays. It's my little ritual that I've been doing for the last twenty years. I love it. Yeah. This Sunday they, you know, was they have this um, almanac segment, right? So it was almanac, and on this day, August twenty fifth, that was yesterday, eighteen thirty five, in the first of a series of six articles announced the supposed discovery of life on the moon. Okay, August twenty fifth, eighteen thirty five. The New York Sun newspaper released a series of six articles claiming life on the moon. It is known as the Great Moon Hoax. 1835, Dr. Mitchell. Wow. The article, uh, it was supposed to be satire, but people read it as truth where they had uh, two-legged beavers and furry winged humanoids resembling bats inhabiting the moon. These stories set up this observatory uh, that they had seen uh, that that someone, a, a researcher had traveled to Cape Town, South Africa, and from a, a telescope had seen life on, on the moon. And these stories went out and people believed it. Wow. Went out, people believed it. And it became what, what the New York Sun realized. They were like, we thought they would think it was satire, but they didn't. But they said, oh, they sold more newspapers. They sold more newspapers than ever before. They made more money than ever before. So guess what, Dr. Mitchell, they did. They continued to put out quote-unquote satire. Yeah, they leaned in. So this media is nothing new. When I talk about the media being dead, maybe it was forged in death. (laughs) Maybe it's always been dead. Uh, Because it's 1835 that they put this story out and it hit. I'm also thinking of Orson Welles where, you know, there was a Mars invasion that people thought happened. uh, War of the world. It was a radio broadcast that talked Mm -hmm. about Martians coming to people running out their houses. Hysterical. It's so easy for people to believe things that are so ridiculous. Um, And here we are again today where it's really hard to sift through if they were doing this, uh, a hundred plus years ago. Yeah. Why are we surprised? 200 years ago. Yeah. This 200 years, almost 200 years ago. You know, what's powerful about thinking about this is at the end of the day, it feels to me like an example of what happens when what you value more than anything is power and not kind of a common good or a public good, right? Because you lean, those early examples are leaning in because you were able to demonstrate your power to yourself about what you could have people do and how you could benefit from them doing something even if it wasn't for the public good. So this is about, let's be deliberate about what our value systems are and lean in on purpose for something that is good for more people. And that's something that Americans don't practice nearly enough. No, no. And and we should be outraged uh, when people are bad actors. So the, the, the New York Sun admitted. Um, so this this article came out the first of six, August 25th of 1835. A month later, they admitted that the articles were a hoax. Like they didn't say anything. <laughs> they just let, let the papers. Let's, let's keep selling papers. And then people were like, OK. Like nobody w- went to the streets outraged. Like, how dare you do this? Yeah. So there was no consequence. Exactly. Yeah. There was no consequence to doing this and only a benefit. So it is our responsibility, those of us who care, because we always think somebody else is going to do it. So that's the other challenge today. You mm-hmm. always think somebody else is going to stop this. Mm-hmm. Somebody else is going to, going to stand in the... No, it's you. Mm-hmm. It's you. Mm-hmm. And we- together, we collectively say no stop lying like you said making those demands by not feeding into those things that don't have a benefit for us in our communities that is a practice and we have to be deliberate about practicing it my days are cooler nights are warmer and i put the blame on you time moves slow Heartbeats fast. Yeah. When these eyes are 
looking right at you, right at you. You give me something to believe in, just what I need in. You're the closest.